Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Super Ego, and this is Darkest Dungeon. So this game's just as its uh, full release on Steam, and I think it's come to consoles as well, if it isn't already. Um, I've had it in early access on Steam for a while now. Uh, it's a really, really good game. It's an in yeah, it's an indie RPG roguelike. Um, but with a twist, you don't have a single character, you have a roster of heroes that you can choose from. Um, and obviously when you take a group out into the dungeons, any survivors are going to get experience and level up and get better. But they're also going to be mentally stressed out. Um, and they're going to acquire afflictions and quirks as the game progresses. And one of the main focuses of the gameplay is how you manage those stress levels and the quirks. Um, and how effective you keep your, your heroes. Um, so let's start by checking out the intro video. Ruin has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I've bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets. Exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Every step unsettled the ancient earth. But we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity. Until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial. <laughs> It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. So, there you have it. We are the last living heir to the estate. Uh, which includes a small hamlet at the foot of the hill that it's on. Um, and we've been summoned home by the, the dying wish of our, our, our relative there to basically redeem the family name, uh, redeem the estate, um, because through his curiosity and his digging, he woke up some evil bastardry in the depths below the estate. And it's our job to clear it out, if we can. So let's go ahead and start a new campaign. And I think we've got a tutorial to begin with, unless it's changed since I last played. with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside leading only I fear to ever more tenebrous places there is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road and on its writhing path you will face viciousness violence and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. 
the old road will take you to hell. But in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Okay, so we're in the little tutorial quest, um, which is to get along the old roads where our wagons crashed to the safety of the hamlet. Uh, and there's going to be various pop-ups during this, but I'll go through them for anyone who's curious. So, map navigation. You are currently in a room. To move forth, click on another room on the map display. This will take you to the connecting hallway. So, this on the map, if, I don't know whether you can even see me mouse pointer, but in the bottom right of our user interface, the torch is our current location, and the, there you go, move to this room. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Now, if I, if I move forward, I'm not actually going anywhere because the room literally is the confines of this screen. Um, and to move to the next room, we click. Brigands have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. And now we're in the connecting hallway. Um, that's what it's called, even though we're outside. It's technically a hallway. So while in a hallway, press D to move forward, A to move back, or you can just click in front of or behind the party. Um... Uh, so there you go. I love the art style in this game. It's sort of a like almost like gothic comic book. I've I've seen it be described as gothic crow quill art, um, as in it's been drawn with a crow quill. Um, okay, so you saw that then. That was me crusader getting a bit of stress. Um, nearly everything you do in the game will um, generate stress, other than skills that are specifically designed to relieve stress or limit its effects um, so if we have a look at our crusader the flashing gold bar is that he's active and I can click between the two like that red bar is his hit points and the white pips are his stress level so he's currently on 3 of 200 stress and our highwayman is currently north of 200 stress um, and as that, as that bar increases um, bad things will happen if it maxes out then really bad shit tends to happen not always but most of the time bad shit happens so we're just going to move through the corridor and probably get attacked here we go okay kill the enemy combat is turn based on your hero's turn click a skill icon and then click on a highlighted target if you can't select a particular skill it's because that hero needs to be standing in a different spot or there are no valid targets move over the skill to see the requirements so on the initiative phase our highwayman has gone first sometimes it might be the crusader sometimes it might be an enemy um, so the highwayman's gone first and that's generally what's going to happen because he's got a speed of 7 um, and he's got plus 2 from a quirk which I should be able to see can't I? here we go quick reflexes plus 2 speed um, so if we look at open vein uh, we can see that the valid, the valid targets are the front 2 enemies which are those red dots and he needs to be standing anywhere other than at the very back of a full group. Uh, at the minute there's only two in the group so it makes no difference. Um, if we look at Grape Shot Blast, he can hit all three of the front three enemies at once. But he can't be at the front or the back to use it. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and use Open Veins. So you'll see if I click on a skill. It highlights the valid target you can see underneath the brigand there's like a red kind of icon above his um, health bar that means to say he is a valid target not that we've targeted him but he's a valid target and then if we mouse over him we can see that the display where our map normally is shows the potential damage and chance to hit and chance to crit um, against this target with this ability uh, so hero potential hero damage between four and eight so we're probably not going to kill him in one hit um, and we've got a five percent chance to crit and it's likely that we're going to hit him 83 percent so let's click and he dodged after me rambling about oh we're probably going to hit fuck off uh, so the crusader again same thing so little icons say who, who we can hit and where we need to be 
So Smythe is is the Crusader's bread and butter. Nice big fuck off swing of a sword. Uh, maximum of 12 damage, so there's potential to kill him in one hit. Uh, same chance to hit and crit as the Highwayman. Nearly kills him. And now it is go. So we used an ability that hit both of our guys at once. Didn't receive any stress, which was nice. Uh, so we're just going to finish him off. Fifty gold. Switch, and you can see we can flick between the map and our inventory. Um, there will be items that you can use um, to heal, uh, clear uh, debuffs and poisons and things like that. Interactive objects. While exploring, you will often find interactive objects. Click or press W to investigate them. Take a look at this tent. Now, it's worth noting that different items that you can interact with are going to... Basically, they're going to be of different types. Uh, so this is a, I think it said it was a brigand's tent. Um, I've got a highwayman, so I'm going to use the highwayman to, to check out this tent. So I'm going to stand in front of it and press W. That is how it works, isn't it? Here we go. Um, you can choose who checks it out. So I'm going to choose the brigands. Brigands left valuables. I mean, I'm not me brigand, me highwayman. So we've basically got 750 gold, which is the value of the the onyx and the jade. So I'm going to take them. Uh, yeah, you might find a, a holy relic, in which case use the crusader. Um, or there might be a potentially booby-trapped item. Take the highwayman to use, or use the highwayman rather, to investigate it. Okay, so we stand by the door, and then see our torch is going down. So, as the light decreases, we'll take more stress. Scouting won't be as good. Monsters won't be as surprised. Um, so basically, when the torch gets lower, the game gets harder, but you get better loot. So it's a risk reward question there. An ambush. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. Okay, so we've got a harder fight this time. We've got a brigand blood letter with 35 hit points, he's a big bastard. Uh, and a brigand fusilier who's got uh, decent range damage. Um, also, see how one how big this guy's health bar is, but also how wide the target thing is uh, that means that he takes up two spaces so open veins can be used on the front two enemies but we can't target the fusilier because the brigand takes up two spaces um, and the good thing is we've surprised them so we've got the first attack which is nice so that's now open vein can actually cause bleed um, it's gar it, it's got a hundred percent chance to bleed the enemy Unless they've got modifiers that reduce that. Uh, and it bleeds for two points over three rounds. Oh, sorry, two points per round for three rounds. So a total of six extra damage if we don't hit him again. But we're going to, we're going to beat the shit out of him. Um, and that stacks. So on this round, I'm going to hit him. Hopefully he'll bleed. So when he, basically the way bleed works. When an enemy that is bleeding activates as in it's their go like the way my guy's just got his turn if i bleed him now when it's his turn he'll take two damage and while that bleed is in effect he will take two damage every time he activates but if we stack it so say i bleed him this round and then it is go and he takes two damage and then he's only got two rounds left if on my go before he he, he takes another go i bleed him again It'll reset the bleed to three rounds, and it'll do four points of damage. So you can do some good damage with these type of attacks. Uh, but anyway, let's get on with it. Five damage, that's respectable, and he's bleeding. Uh, so as soon as he activates, he's going to bleed for two damage. So we're going to smite him as well, just going to focus fire him down. There's his go, there's the bleed. Oh, that was nasty, Jesus Christ. That took some stress there. Yeah, that was not good. Just gonna bleed him again. Fuck you. So we took four that turn. Nearly dead. 
There we go. He died from the bleed. He's going to take two damage. He's got six hit points left, so if I can deal four damage, I've killed him. Oh, oh well, killed him anyway. So, 50 gold, two deeds, and four crests. The deeds and the crests are Hamlet resources, <coughs> which are used to upgrade the structures. Again, I'll talk about that when it's relevant. So, we've completed our quest. After you've completed the requirements of a quest, you have the option to return to town at any time. Just click the crest. You don't need to return to the starting room of the dungeon to exit, and we don't have to exit right away. If you're in a large dungeon and you haven't explored it all, and you complete the quest, there's nothing to say you can't carry on exploring. And as soon as you end up in Shit Creek, you can bug out straight away. Um, but we're going to continue adventuring because we've got this chest. Now, every time I've played this tutorial, this chest has been trapped and I haven't disarmed it. Let's see what happens. It's trapped. And I got blighted. So, now we can end the quest. So, we got five grand for the quest. Uh, a total of 860 gold for the stuff we looted. Uh, and we got some heirlooms. So, the heirlooms are the Hamlet resources. We gained some experience, and we never got any quirks. Whenever you complete a dungeon run, there's a chance for each hero to develop uh, a, a quirk, which is good or bad, usually bad. Um, and they add modifiers and things like that for various gameplay aspects. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now. And you are bound to them. Okay, so the activity log shows us everything we've done in the past week, basically. So, we did a quest, got to the Hamlet, and we are now level 1 on these two heroes. And you can see that there's various goals that you can have a crack at. Uh, uh, complete your first foray into the ruins, and we'll do that. Feed the wise and the hags. These are all boss monsters. Um defeat the brigand 16 pounder no idea oh, maybe, no idea what that means roster goals raise an abomination to resolve six so these are all different hero classes um it's just like a checklist of goals for you to carry out really um don't need to read that out okay so this is the hamlet and these are the various structures that we can use and upgrade as the game progresses at the moment we haven't got anything unlocked um, other than the stagecoach. So click on the stagecoach. Women and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. The stagecoach is your hero lifeblood. You'll need to recruit these two heroes to fill out a party of four. Drag and drop them into your roster. While you're here, spend some of your starting resources on upgrading the stagecoach network. This will increase the number of heroes available here in the future. So straight away, we've got Renald and Dismas, our Crusader and Highwayman. To do any kind of dungeon runs, to do any quests, you need four in a party. So we need to recruit these guys. It doesn't cost anything to recruit them, you just need to have space in your roster. If you look at the top right, current roster is two of nine. You can upgrade that through the stagecoach, um, which we're going to do. So we're going to click on the little plus icon on the left hand corner, left hand side. So upgrading the stagecoach, we can upgrade the network, which increases the number of heroes available in the stagecoach each time, each week. Um, so at the minute it's two. We can upgrade it to three by spending three deeds and three crests. So I'm going to do that now. Great heroes can be found even here, in the mud and rain. Love the narration. It's fucking awesome. Um, right, now, I'm also going to do it once more. I've got enough resources. Uh, just about got enough deeds. More arrive, foolishly seeking fortune and glory. 
in this domain of the damned. So now that we've got it up to 20%, well, kind of stagecoach network is up to level 3. The base plus 1, 2, 3. Um, so now that it's a 3, we get 4 heroes every week. And uh, what that means is, if at the minute we've got 4. What better laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield? At the minute we've got four. If we're unlucky enough to go and do a dungeon run now, and all four of these guys die, when we come, when we're back in the hamlet, we'll be able to recruit another four. If I could only recruit three, I'd be kind of goosed because I wouldn't have enough to do a dungeon run. Um, I've not actually been in that situation, so I don't know whether that's it, game over, or there's a way that you can carry on playing. Um, but regardless, I get it up to four as soon as I can, just so I don't run into that problem. Um, so basically, Ronald the Crusader, he's like our frontline tank. Dismas is DPS. Uh, Ormond is basically a buff character. Um, ah, cool. So these guys don't always start with the same abilities unlocked. I think these two do for the purposes of the tutorial. Um, but these guys don't. So Ormond, our plague doctor, started with emboldening vapors, which is a buff. For, your, for our own guys, which causes them to do 25% more damage and increases their speed by 3, so it's more likely that they'll attack first each round, as well as dealing more damage. Disorienting Blast, um, almost guaranteed to hit. Uh, it doesn't do any damage, but it can shuffle a single target and stun them. Uh, now what shuffle means is basically if we target the... We, can, well, we can't target the frontline enemy, any others if we target them it'll cause them to switch places with one of the other character one of the other enemies uh, and it clears all corpses which is cool uh, blinding gas uh, gotta be in the back two targets the back two um, so it it, it, it 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 affects the both of the back two enemies at once and stuns them and then play grenade, which is uh, it doesn't do much damage. The damage modifier minus ninety percent, so it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, if any. Uh, but it blights them for four points per round for three rounds. Um, that's a really, a really good um, dot. Uh, and then if we look at Tybalt, our Seeker Vestal. Uh, Seeker is the level she is. Uh, you see, he's a Seeker. He's an apprentice, and he's an apprentice. Uh, our Vestal is our healer, or, well, at the minute, the only healer we've got. So you can use Divine Grace, heals 3 to 5, got to be in the back too. Uh, Dazzling Light, uh, stuns the enemy that you target and raises the torch by 6, so increases the light level um, as part of the attack. And then Mace Bash, basic attack, twat them with, with the big stick she's got. And Hand of Light, uh, what does that do? Not much damage. Alright, so it attacks one of the front two and buffs her for plus 15 damage versus unholy. And there's a lot of unholy enemies in this game, so that will come in handy. Um, so if we have a look at the quirks that our characters have got, which you can see in this first section on the left here, so our Crusader has got a positive quirk called Warrior of Light, which means he does plus 10 damage if the torch is above 75%. He's also God-fearing and a Kleptomaniac. Kleptomaniac prone to steal an item, so what that means in game terms is whenever we loot items, there's a chance we won't get to use it because he'll steal it. Um, we can't even use it on him, it's just, it's, it's gone, it's, you know, it's, it fell off the back of a wagon basically and God fear him means that in town he can only pray for stress relief so there's various uh, places in town where we can send our heroes to relieve stress um, they can go to the tavern to drink or gamble or use the brothel they can go to the abbey to pray or uh, <coughs> excuse me I kind of um, receive like like punishments that the, the, the word escapes like basically like flagellation where they'll they'll take punishment to atone for the sins and that'll help with stress levels. The only thing he can do is pray. So 
if for some reason we can't use the Abbey to pray, we can't relieve any stress for him at that point. Uh, there's a caretaker for the Hamlet, and each week he'll be using up one of the slots. So if he's praying, we can't do anything with, with this guy that week. Um, look at Dismas. Hard Noggin, plus 15 stun resist, and we've already seen the quick reflexes giving him plus 2 speed. He's also a known cheat, which means he's not allowed to gamble. Um, so if the gambling hall is the only place in town available for stress relief, he's buggered. <coughs> Ormond he's an armor tinker which means it costs him minus 20% to upgrade his armor pretty good he's calm which means he does minus 15 damage on the first round and he's diurnal diurnal which means minus 2 speed if torch is below 26 so if the light level's low he's slower I generally play with the light levels high anyway uh, and Tybalt our Vestal Cove Tactician, plus 15% damage when fighting in the cove. So there's a couple of different locations we can explore, the cove being one of them. And she's a gambler, which means in town she can only gamble, similar to uh, Reynolds' uh, God-fearing um, negative quirk. So here we've got the tavern. Uh, we can't click on it. We can't click on anywhere, really, can we, other than the coach? Oh, we can click on the graveyard, I suppose. Most will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. So at the minute, there's no one in the graveyard. So whenever one of our guys die, we'll be able to see them in here. A bit morbid, but it's in the game. <coughs> uh, the Nomad Wagon, once it's unlocked, we can purchase rare items. Uh, the Blacksmith lets us upgrade our armour and weapons. The guild lets us unlock new skills for our heroes. Uh, the abbey lets us relieve stress through praying and flagellation and something else. Uh, the tavern lets us relieve stress by drinking, gambling, the brothel. Um, the sanitarium lets us remove negative quirks. So if, for example, we wanted to stop this bastard robbing any good items... We can send him to the sanitarium and pay to get rid of his kleptomania. And that goes for any um, red quirks. can be expensive, but if it's a hero you want to keep hold of, it's worth investing in. Um, Stagecoach we've looked at. And the last one is the survivalist. Certain places we go to, the dungeon room will be quite long. If it's long enough you'll automatically get firewood which lets you camp for every uh, for every batch of firewood I suppose you can camp once um, and during the camping phase you can use camping skills um, if we take a look at Reynolds see his camping skills he's got encourage stand tall and zealous speech so encourage lets us reduce one companion stress by 15 stand tall uh, one companion, reduce stress by 15 and remove mortality debuffs. So it costs double what it does to encourage, but you get to remove mortality debuffs. And zealous speech, time cost is 5, it can only be used on himself. Oh sorry, it, one of the effects that's only for himself is that he reduces stress by 15. All companions, he reduces stress by 15 and they suffer minus 15% stress damage. So... Whenever there's damage, uh, there's any stress applied to the group, it's 15% less, except for him. Um, and these guys have got similar skills. So I think some of them can heal. Yeah, so the Vestal can heal. Uh, or buff. That's a decent buff, that plus 10 accuracy and plus 10 dodge. Uh, I, think you can only you can, I think you can only use each skill once. Or you're limited by the time cost. Uh, so say you've got a total total time of six, you could use bless twice, I think. Um, but that's enough rambling for this video. In the next episodes, we will crack on with the first quest in the first area, which it's going to be one of these. But well, it's going to be the ruins. Your work begins. 
But yeah, in the next video, we're going to pick it up right here, and we're going to head into the ruins. And you can see a state map. The first mission is to scout. Test yourself in the mad realm of your fallen ancestor. Take note of how the creatures have taken over, but don't delve too far. So what we've got to do is explore 90% of rooms. So if we can avoid a fight, we're allowed to. Uh, we don't need to fight to complete this quest. We just need to explore rooms. Most rooms are going to have fights in them, but, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And for completing it, we'll get some money. We'll get four crests and a stun stone. Plus 20% stun skill chance, but minus two dodge. Most items have a positive and a negative effect. Um to let you weigh up whether or not you want to use it. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. But for now, I will say tatty bye.